Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out a large original mecha model here of the Bailu Air Combat Custom here. This kit has been out for a little while, so some of you guys may already have this kit, you may have already built it, but this is gonna be non-scale, but a pretty large model kit too, as you can see just from this quite big box. Really cool design here for this one. I really like the kind of more utilitarian gray color scheme that we have going on with this one. Really interesting, cool looking design. So I'm excited, let's go ahead and check it out for today's video. So yeah, like I said, pretty big box here for what promises to be a relatively large kit. As you can see, they put the size of it right up here, a 23 centimeter plastic model kit with the alloy frame. So it is gonna have metal parts in there. And 23 centimeters put the, puts this in like the very large master grade range. And so it is going to be not necessarily as big as a perfect grade, but certainly larger than your standard master grade in terms of the height of this, but some really cool looking box art there on the front. On the ends of the box, just kind of the same thing there, just a closer image of the mobile suit. And on the top of the box, nothing really here except for just the empty sky kind of continued on from the box art, kind of wraps around to the top of the box. But here on the bottom of the box, we got some nice images of the model kit posed and just kind of standing front and back. Really like the silhouette of this mobile suit, really cool. I don't know if mobile suit's the right word for it necessarily, but that's what I'm gonna go with here on this side of the box. A little bit different as we have like the line art there in the background and then line art here for one of these, I don't know exactly what to call it, sort of like drone units, I guess, sort of that you can see there on the box art. But let's go ahead and pop the top here and see what we have inside. There's not really too much else to see on the outside of the box. And we're first of all greeted with something I love to see, a nice big sheet of water slide decals here in a zipper bag, so that's cool. Let's go ahead and pop these out, take a look. And all the decals here look really nice. We've got these mostly in gray and yellow. There's some here in white there as well, but those look really nice. A nice array of just kind of caution markings and other kind of more specific kind of lining markings and stuff too, but you'll, seems like you'll definitely have plenty of extras that you could, if you opt not to, squeeze all these onto one kit that you could use these on some different kits as well and those look really nice. As for the instruction manual here, features the same artwork on the front and some text. On the back side, this is gonna be the decal guide. So here's a guide to where all those decals are gonna go. On the back inside page, it looks like it's to the end of the construction of the base there. So just going back to the front here real quick, we've got images and a bunch of text there in Chinese about some of the different units. So that's, again, it has like swords, rifles, this sort of like a booster unit, I guess. What is that? It's an anti-shelter disposable LF cannon. So, all right, that cannon there. And the multi-purpose combat UAV, Sanhua. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but there you go. And over here on the next page, really cool illustration of that with kind of a bunch of different hatches open and everything. A little bit more text up there at the top. Next page is getting into the parts list right here and then after that we're kind of on into the construction and everything is going to be all in color which is really nice so got full color also tells us like for building the head which runners we're going to need for building this section i love to see that it just makes the construction process that much easier and more straightforward here so i really like that the instructions look really nice you got it on the, some nice like uh, heavyweight nice glossy paper too. So a nice instruction booklet, but let's check out the runners here. And actually before we do that, let's take a look at the alloy frames. This is packaged in a shell like this, and we also have our hand parts in there, you can see, but it's all a die cast metal frame there, and it looks to be pretty substantial, so that should be pretty interesting. We do also, interestingly, have this little squeeze tube bottle here of some oil that I guess you're meant to use on that if the frame is a little bit too tight. So that's kind of interesting. And here we've also got this uh, pre-painted part here for the sword blade, which it looks to be like a white plastic part, which is painted uh, in silver there. That looks quite nice. And then here in white, we've also got a couple of pieces separated here for the base, like the main base plate and the main arm. We're gonna have a couple of additional pieces here for this, but those parts are there in a kind of off-white color. But then getting into the runners here, runners A, B, C, and D are gonna be all of our parts, uh, mostly for like the inner frame here in this very dark gray color. So there's runner A. Runner B we have two of, and you can get a sense of how big these parts are too. There's some parts like for the, like the frame of the lower leg and some really nice detail on these parts as well. Runner C, we also have two of there, and then runner D for the rest of those dark gray parts there. And then runners E, F, G, and H are gonna be all of our white armor pieces here for the kit. There's runner 
E, and then here as well on uh, runner F we've got two of these. A lot of great detail on these parts. Just to give you guys a nice close up look here, you can see on some of these parts some really nice details there. So this is definitely gonna benefit from some panel lining to help bring out some of those details. Runner G, we also have two of there. And then runner H, here just the one for some more of those white parts. The runners I and J are here in a little bit kind of darker, sort of medium gray color there. Again, a lot of great detail on those parts too. Runners J, K, and M are gonna be here in a nice molded silver. It's not like super shiny metallic-y silver, but it's a nice, kind of, it'll give us a nice kind of two-tone to a lot of the frame and mechanical aspects of the kit being in kind of gray and then also some silver parts there will look nice. Runner N is in a really nice plated gold here. So again, we'll make for some really nice accents there on the kit. Runner O here is some parts in plain clear. And similarly, runner P, we have one version of runner P in plain clear and then another runner P here in clear orange. So you'll have some options there for those. If you wanted like your clear sword blades to be in a clear purple or clear green or whatever, you can paint those, otherwise just stick with the clear orange. So that looks really nice. And last but not least, then runner Q is some more clear parts, but these are gonna be for the base. So you can use those together with the white parts of the base we saw a moment ago, and that should work out pretty nicely, but we'll see. Let me get the kit all built up and then we'll check it out. But all right guys, and here is the kit all built up. Quite the impressive build. I really like this quite a bit. Really large too, as you can see. Quite a big kit. I'll show you a size comparison here in a little bit just to other kind of similar master grade type 100 scale Gundam kits. But as you can see here, it's a really super cool design. Really highly detailed, very nicely detailed without being too overly detailed in my opinion. I really like the amount of detail, the amount of color separation, everything that we have going on with this. It's really nicely engineered as well as we'll take a look at like the part separation, everything, the overall construction. We'll start off taking a look at the included accessories and option parts and stuff that we have here. Let's go ahead and get into it. So first of all, starting off with its weaponry here, we have the carbine mode of the rifle. And this looks really nice and really nice part separation here for this color separation. You got that clear orange part up there for the camera sight on that just going to fit into the hand. And then we also have the longer version of that, which is like this like sniper rifle cannon kind of version here. And I wanted to show you guys this part on here. Now this part here on the side is optional, but this is a part that will connect from the side of the rifle into the side of the arm to give you some added stability. And you have one for the left side and one for the right side. And for both of these rifles, you can make them both in this way, in like the carbine mode, or you can make both in the longer sniper rifle kind of form here. So you do have all the parts to make both of the rifles like that. It's just a matter of basically switching this barrel part. So you have two versions of each barrel. And then you also have a second set of the parts to make another kind of longer extended camera there on the top for that basically. So really cool weaponry here for this. I really like both of those. And even though this is quite long and pretty large here, I don't think we're gonna have too much of a weight issue with this, especially with this uh, stabilizer part here to connect onto the forearm. So that should really come in handy. And then we've also got the sword. Now a couple different versions of the sword. This one is the one that uses this uh, plated silver part there for the blade, which looks really nice. I really like just the like simplicity of this. It's quite simple, straight, long sword there. And then you can see on the sides of the hips here, we have the handles for two more swords. Now those are gonna use these clear effect parts here like this for the sword blades of those. And so once we remove the handles here from the side skirts, they can just be held in hand and use those. And we have more clear sword blade parts like this, which are gonna be uh, coming out of the back of the forearm. So if we look right here, you can see where those are gonna plug in. It's so plugged into the back of the arm. That's gonna look like that, which also looks really cool. Quite a unique weapon here to have that long sword blade there out the back of the forearm. I really like that. And then for our hand option parts, they're gonna be fixed pose, swappable hands. Here we have closed fists. We also have weapon holding hands for the swords and for the rifles with those with trigger fingers extended. And we've also got two sets of like posing hands, one with just outstretched fingers like that, and then one in this sort of uh, two fingers extended pose sort of like that. And you've got all these hands for both the left and the right side. Lastly then, in terms of option parts here for the faceplate, you can see I've got this faceplate on here that has the kind of one scar there off to the side. We do have two additional options for that if you wanted to have one faceplate here that does 
doesn't have any scar on it or this one faceplate here that has like a scar on both sides, sort of similar to like the uh, Destiny Gundam. So that's all our options for the main kit. Then of course, turning it around here onto the back, we have the drone units. So there's two that are plugged onto the back skirt right there and you can kind of adjust the angle of those. And then two that are mounted here onto the bottom of the backpack as well. So all of these can just slide off of there like so. And the drone also looks really nice. These wings fold down and you can also fold these back if you wanted to like that. But I think they're actually meant to have these sort of like inverse wings like so. Really nice, uh, this orange clear part inside there. And you have like the cannon underneath. This is just going to plug onto the action base just in the same way that it plugs onto the backpack or the back skirt. So just gonna be using that same connection point. And so on that note, here is our included base. And up here at the top, this part will not move, rotate forward and back. You actually, actually take it off and reposition it if you wanna adjust the angle, which is a little bit annoying, but it just means that it's gonna be a little bit more secure, which I don't mind. So that's good, it's not gonna move at all. And that's the only adjustment point here on the action base, unfortunately, just this angle forward and back. So it, it, that is a little bit limiting, but as you can see down there at the bottom, we have attachment points for the arms for the drone units. So we have two long and two short ones of these, and there's a couple of points for articulation here on these clear arms there for those. So if we like plug one onto the base here, and this is just going to plug into the back of the drone there like that. And obviously we can adjust the angle more suitably, but that's how that's gonna work essentially. It looks nice. And then for a quick size comparison, here it is compared to the Master Grade Shinanju Stein Verka, another large white mobile suit. And you can tell uh, this is even larger, even taller anyway, in particular than the Shinanju Stein. The Shinanju Stein is already a, quite a large Master Grade compared to a lot of other Master Grades, most other Master Grades. So it should give you a pretty good idea of just how tall it is. And in terms of centimeters, it looks like it's gonna be coming to about 23 centimeters head height there. So just talk a little bit more about about the main kit itself. The articulation is all really nice. And you guys will see that more once we get into the posing of the kit, but you have all sorts of moving parts on here, like parts of the armor and everything that will move. The articulation here in the chest is kind of nice, very similar to like the Kyokai Senki kits that when you move the shoulder forward and back, you have this kind of like piston here on the side of the chest. That part will move a little bit forward and back. And then also parts inside there on the sides of the torso, when you bend the torso side to side, those kind of piston parts on there will move slightly like that, which is pretty cool. Inside the chest here, you can open up this cockpit hatch, which is the clear part right there. That opens up and you do have a seated pilot figure inside there. Also here on the sides of the chest, these flaps will open up here as well. I'm guessing that's supposed to be like some sort of beam emitter or something. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to be, but some sort of weapon there, I guess on the sides of the chest, you can pop those open. The articulation all is really nice and you have those clear parts um, working really well. Like the clear parts, the clear orange parts, and then the gold parts all work really well. Some nice accents against just like the basically like black and white coloring of the kit. That said, there are a couple of points of articulation like here, you have this really nice bend forward, but it's not able to actually hold that pose at all. And around here on the back, maybe I'm doing something wrong or maybe I missed something. There's like a little, a uh, fold out tab here in the back that I thought, okay, maybe that's something to do with being able to hold up this pose a little bit more, but not as far as I can tell. That doesn't really seem to do anything. We also have this flap here at the base of the back also, which doesn't really seem to do anything. So I'm not sure if there's actually a way to make this so that it can hold this forward leaning pose a little bit better. Unfortunately, it has some trouble with that. And then while we're here, as you can see, like around on the backpack, these wings, can be rotated up and down a little bit. You can rotate those. And these also feature a clear part there on like the bottom of the wing, which is kind of interesting just design wise. Up here on the backpack, these parts here as well, you can adjust the angle of those forward and back. And then just taking a look at the legs as well. The legs are gigantic on this kit, which I like. I do like the proportions of this quite a bit, but you have these huge legs and really nice full bend there at the knee with the knee armor and thigh armor all moving separately like that so that works really nicely and it's really super smooth so that looks nice and going down here to the feet the feet are really quite interesting i like how it's got these big huge chunky legs and then going down to these like quite small feet too you have this vent on the bottom side and actually like a hollow gap kind of like around the foot there making the feet look very light and simple some nice posability with these as well going around here onto the back of the leg you have like a clear orange part inside of a clear part there on the back of the leg there so some nice details there 
And one thing that you'll also notice about this kit is that it basically has no seam lines on it. So if this is one that you did want to paint, it's one that you could do so very easily with hardly any prep work needed for this. Basically, you might have to just do a little bit of sanding here and there on the parts just to prep them and you don't have to worry about doing any kind of seam line removal or anything like that. So the parts are engineered in a way that everything fits together and anywhere where there's parts that do come together, it's just made up as like a detail line or a panel line or something like that. So really, really nice construction in that sense. So as we get into taking a look at some posing here with this kit, a couple of things just in terms of the weight issues that I was concerned about and the possible posability issues just based on a couple of weak points in the frame, most notably there in the uh, that midsection that we just talked about. Um, it is, it does kind of maybe become a little bit of an issue kind of depending on the pose, but as you can see, there's loads of posing that you can do with this kit and it's really not gonna be too much of an issue, I think. So not really anything to worry about there. Now, as far as the rest of the frame goes there, the kit is quite heavy just because of that metal frame in there. And in particular, the legs, because the legs are so large and quite heavy, I was worried about the weight of those. That also doesn't really seem to be causing any issues for us in terms of just being able to pose the kit. And so we have a lot of different ways that we can pose this too just between having some really great weapon options there between the different types of swords that we have to the beam tonfas there on the back of the arm, the beam rifle, the beam, uh, like the big uh, sniper rifle anyway, and the, the ability to make two of the rifles if you wanted to do that. And then you have the drones in the back and everything else. So you got a lot of stuff here that you can do with this, which is awesome. So the posability is great. And just in terms of uh, like the construction of the kit, putting the kit together, if you guys watched the live stream, uh, you saw me talk about this during the live stream. If you missed it, you can go back and check it out. But there was a couple of points uh, in terms of just the overall fit of the kit where there was a couple points where I did have to apply like a little bit more pressure. There's a couple of parts that maybe were like a little bit tight to put in, but ultimately nothing really all that bad. Nothing was like a, a bad fit or anything like that. So as long as you just kind of take your time with it and put the parts on carefully, especially some of like the smaller parts, some of the parts that are on the head, uh, you do want to be a little bit careful with because there are some really quite small, quite sharp parts. But as long as you take your time with it and you know apply pressure on parts where it's needed and carefully, you'll be perfectly fine in terms of the construction of this. So the fit is good. And yeah, as for the metal frame, it's really kind of unnecessary for a kit like this. I think it probably just uh, adds unnecessary cost to the kit. But on that note, actually the MSRP, or like the or the price that this kit goes for online is very reasonable. I think at USA Gundam store, we're unfortunately sold out at the moment, but when we had it in stock, uh, going for $50 there on the website. That is a lot of really, really nice kit for $50. So I mean, that metal frame is going to add to the cost a little bit. If that had just been like a full plastic frame, I think it probably would be a little cheaper. Would it have been as stable? I think probably, although I'm not entirely sure, you know, without being able to test it. But I imagine the metal frame holds up uh, the weight a little bit better than a plastic frame would, but obviously a plastic frame would be much lighter. It wouldn't have be as heavy. So I'm not too sure which ultimately would have been the better result for the kit, but I don't, honestly, I don't really care too much for the whole uh, metal frame aspect of this, but it doesn't really seem to benefit or hurt the kit in any substantial way as far as I can tell. But overall, a really, really nice kit, super cool and a fantastic value for the price. Definitely worth checking out if you guys can get your hands on it. I don't know if we're going to be getting any more of this here at USA Gundam Store. If we do, I would really recommend you guys to check it out if you're a fan of like master grade type models like this. Now, as for any other questions you guys may have about the kit, do feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. Otherwise, just the last thing I will say about this is that I really like the design of this. It's a really cool design, really fantastic proportions. It looks great. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing for me. Uh, I think that the details, the parts, uh, the proportions, everything looks really, really nice on this kit. So fantastic. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for all of your support, leaving a like, making sure that you're subscribed. I really appreciate it. Until next time, hope you guys all have a great day. See y'all later. Bye, guys.